Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. <laughs> Thing you catch him, uh, Lieutenant? M maybe you got him now. Maybe, but we'll need your help, Mr. Reduzzi. You got my help, all of my help. I've been a night watchman 20 years. Now I can help the police, <laughs> making me proud. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, just sit here. Thank you. you. You know, I thought it was a bundle he was carrying, a big bundle. <laughs> That's a joke, no, Lieutenant? Yeah. A joke, man, it's not funny. This bundle the man carried down the fire escape. She was a dead girl. Maybe I should run after him. Now you called the police. That was the right thing. Down the fire escape. Then he put her on the pavement and walk away. Just like that. The girl, she was a strangler. Huh, Lieutenant? That's right. Strangler. If I run after him, maybe I'll catch him. Well, you might have, Mr. Reducci. I have your attention, please? Me, Reducci. A man who almost caught a murder. The audience room. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. Uh, this man, the, the killer, when do they bring him out? The In a minute, Mr. Richards. And dress back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, all right, this way. Pick it up, pick it up. The first man walk to the end of the stage. Take your place. The others follow. That's far enough. Now turn and face front. You, the second man, don't look up at the ceiling. Look out at the people so they can see you. That's right. All right, number one, Finney Russell, assault. Where do you live, Finney? Same place, down by the fish market. You hit a man this morning, knocked him up. That's right. Why did you hit him, Finney? Oh, he said a bad thing about me. Is that all? Oh, he tried to sell me a rotten fish. What did you hit him with? Oh, everything. What's everything? A rubber boot and a bucket, I think. Number two, Harold Dodge, theft. Where are you from, Harold? The East. Where in the East? The only place in the East, Boston. Don't tell me, Harold. Tell the people out there. Boston. Ever been arrested before? A few times. How often? Five, ten, a hundred? Seven. Speak louder. How many times were you arrested? Seven. Where were you arrested this time? In a phone booth. I was calling my girl. The arresting officer said you were breaking open the coin box. I was trying to get my nickel back. The call was hardly worth it. Number three, Warren Fuller, vagrancy. Where do you live, Warren? Slop house. Which flop house? They don't play no favorites. Sun goes down, it's always a flop house. What kind of work do you do, Warren? Work? All right. What do you do all day? All that. Sit in the park, take a walk up Broadway. Ever think about getting a job? I've thought about it. Have you tried? Sure, I tried. When did you try, Warren? 1933. Didn't work out. Number four, Charlie Bond, open charge. Where do you live, Charlie? I'm not answering any questions. What's that? What's that? I, I didn't hear you. I said I'm not answering any questions. Okay, make it tough for yourself. I don't feel good. I'm sick. You'll feel worse if you don't answer the questions. Where do you live? Rainbow Apartments. At the apartment house across the street from the realty building? How do I know? How do I? I don't know. 
You ever been arrested before, Charlie? No, no. Mr. Reducey? What do you do for a living? I, I don't know. Come on, speak up. I, I just can't say. You're not sure? But you see, Lieutenant, Any questions or identifications? I see. Sergeant Graham. Yes, Lieutenant. Number four, have him walk back and forth across the stage. Yes, sir. That's you, Charlie. Walk. Over to the end of the stage and back. I don't feel like walking. Walk! walk. Now, Mr. Reducey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the man? What? I think so, maybe. Sergeant? Yes? Hold number four for interrogation. I don't feel good, Lieutenant. You'll get a doctor. Huh? After we talk, Charlie. After you tell me about last night. You don't want to get a police doctor. Let me phone. I'll get my own doctor. Last night, where were you? All night. You want to know about all night? Uh-huh. Well, I was in my apartment. All night. The day before, I was sick. The night watchman in the Realty building said he saw you carry the body of a girl down the fire escape. You left the body on the pavement and walked away. Yeah, my kidneys must, must be my kidneys, the way it hurts. The watchman said... Well, he's a liar. Wasn't me. Who was it? How do I know? You get paid to find out such things. Those scratches on your face, Charlie. How did you get them? I don't. I don't know. Maybe I cut myself shaving. They're long scratches. The kind a girl's fingernails would make. Ben. Yeah, Matt. Come on in. The morgue called. They got a girl down there who thinks she can identify the body. Uh huh. Well, take Charlie back to his cell. I'll meet you down at the morgue. <laughs> This is Laura Phillips. She works in the dance hall over near 15th Street. Lieutenant, I hope you won't think... I, I mean, this is the first time now, I... we understand, Miss Phillips. You think it might be someone you know. My roommate. I know, it's silly, but... Well, Edna left the dance hall in such a hurry last night, and she didn't come home. Sure, I... sure, I understand, Miss Phillips. All right, ma'am. Edna... You, you must think I'm awful, Mr. Guthrie, getting upset like that, but when I saw Edna... Now that's all right, Miss Phillips. Feel well enough to answer a few questions? Could I have a glass of water, please? Matt, get her a glass of water. Yes, sure, sure. Your roommate, uh, what was her full name, Edna One? Edna Hawley. We'd been rooming together about two years. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. And, uh, we both worked at the Silver Swan Dance Hall. I see. You know anybody who would want to kill her? Oh, no. Edna was... Well, she was a little wild, but she was all right. Everybody liked her. Uh, what about last night at the dance hall? Did she have an argument? Edna never had arguments, Mr. Guthrie. She she was sweet. S sweetest person I've ever known. Miss Phillips, does the name Charlie Bond mean anything to you? Charlie Bond? No. Matt, hand me those mug shots of Charlie, left hand draw. Here you are, Ben. Right. Ever see this man before, Miss Phillips? Maybe. He looks familiar. Right, try the profile. Here. He looks so familiar, I think. Uh, take your time. Yes, I... I've seen him, Mr. Guthrie. I'm sure I've seen him at the dance hall. Last night? No, it, it must have been about a month ago, maybe two. He came in every night for about a week. Have you seen him since then? Not once. Did this man kill Edna? That's something we have to find out. Poor Edna, she was so sweet. Did she have any relatives here in town or somewhere else? No, I don't think so. Her mother and father are dead. She had a brother, but he was killed in the war. Oh, I just remembered. Holly was Edna's married name. 
She only talked about her husband once a long time ago. That's why I almost forgot it. She never saw him? Oh, well, he lived in town, but they were separated. Hmm. Any idea of his first name? Albert or Alfred or something like that. I believe she said he was some kind of an artist, a painter, I think. I'm not sure. Well, all right, Miss Phillips. Thanks for your help. That's all? You don't want to ask uh, me? Not now. I'll have somebody drive you home. Matt. Yeah, Ben? Set up a tracer on Edna Hawley's husband. Come in, it's open. You're Alfred Hawley? Who are you? Police, Lieutenant Guthrie. Hmm. Sit down. Oh, just dump those canvases on the floor. <sighs> I want to ask you some questions. About what? You were married to Edna Hawley? I still am. When did you last see your wife? Oh, three, four years ago. I forget. I forget because I don't want to remember. You hear about support money? No. Well, that's good, because I don't have support money for her or me. Edna in trouble? She's dead. Would you hand me that brush, the big one? Thanks. I said your wife is dead. Murdered. She probably deserved it. It doesn't bother you? Makes me happy. She hated me and I hated her. We let it go at that. Did you hate her enough to kill her? More than enough. Where were you last night? Uh, tell me, Lieutenant. How was Edna killed? Strangled. In the Rainbow Apartments. Body was carried down the fire escape, left on the sidewalk. You didn't answer my question. About where you were last night. No, no, I didn't. Well? <laughs> what's so funny? <laughs> you think I killed Edna? <laughs> Carried her body down a fire escape? Maybe. Can you convince me you didn't? <laughs> Come on, Lieutenant. Want me to show you to the door? We're not through talking. Yes, we are. You'd better come along to headquarters. Certainly. Anytime. Well, come on. Sure. Would you mind handing me those crutches, Lieutenant? I can't walk a step without them. CBS brings you two one-hour programs every Friday evening. One designed for relaxation and thorough enjoyment. The other intended to give you a listening post on what's been happening in the world the past seven days. Friday nights on CBS brings you Songs for Sale with Jan Murray and Hear It Now with Edward R. Murrow, an hour recapitulation of the news of the past week, political, front line, sports, entertainment. Songs for Sale and Hear It Now are broadcast every Friday on most of these same CBS stations. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I've been waiting for you, Ben. How'd you make out with Edna Hawley's husband? <sighs> He's a cripple. Couldn't possibly have carried it down the fire escape. What'd you get? Charlie Bond. He said he wasn't out of his apartment all last night. Well, he's lying, Ben. The man who runs a newspaper stand three blocks from the apartment house said Charlie bought a paper from him last night around 11. Is he sure? He's sure. Charlie's a regular customer. I'll go get Charlie. Could you, Lieutenant, do me a favor, will you? Oh, 
one. Stop making that chair squeak. Gets on my nerves. You'll get used to it, Charlie. I feel sick, sicker than I did this morning. Makes my nerves jumpy. Charlie, we found out who the dead girl was. You did? Edna Hawley. She worked in a dance hall called the Silver Swan. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Ever been in the Silver Swan, Charlie? The Lieutenant asked you a question, Charlie. Were you ever at the Silver Swan? Maybe, maybe. I'm a sick man. I can't sleep nights. I go lots of places. Why did you kill her? Kill who? Edna Hawley. You strangled her. Why? I don't know what you're talking Last about. Last night you brought Edna to your apartment, then you killed her. Why, Charlie? You're crazy. I wasn't out of my apartment. We know you were out last night. How do you know? You don't know. You I... bought a newspaper, 11 o'clock. Did you forget, Charlie? Yeah, I forgot. All right, so I went out for a paper. Why are you looking at me like that? Nothing, Charlie. Nothing at all. I went out for a paper. It was only a couple of minutes. You can't prove anything from that. When did you meet Edna? After you bought the paper? I didn't meet this, Edna. I don't even know. Her. When are you, when are you going to let me go? There's no hurry. You have to let me go soon, Lieutenant, because you haven't got a thing on me. Give them to Asher, man. Where are you taking me? Back to yourself. Come on, Charlie. You better let me go soon. I gotta see my doctor. I can't kill him. Take him upstairs again, Bill. You uh, think the same way I do, don't you, Ben? How's that? Charlie's our man. He killed Edna Hawley. I think so, but I can't prove it. We might make him crack. I doubt it, though. We'll try. It won't be easy. We need a witness, Ben. Somebody who saw Charlie Bond and Edna Hawley together last night. All right. We'll make our own witness. Huh? Policewoman. We'll find a policewoman who looks like a dance hall hostess. Here we are, Nora. Is Charlie Bond already in the visitor's room? No, he'll be brought in. You understand what you're supposed to do now? Uh, yes, sir. Just remember what I told you. We'll be listening in the next room. Good luck, Nora. Thanks, Lieutenant. All set up, man? All set up and working. Grab a chair, Ben. All right. <sighs> hey, turn it up a little, huh? Right. You think Charlie will go for her story? It's a chance. I don't know, Ben. Nora being new and... Matt. Yeah. That must be him now. They told me I had a visitor. Hello, Charlie. Who are you? I've got something to tell you. I don't know you. I work at the Silver Swan Dance Hall. What's that got to do with me? I know you, Charlie. I've got something to tell you. Something about... Edna Hawley. I don't know anything about her. I'm going back to my cell. Okay, if you don't want to hear. Yeah, what? What about Edna Hawley? I'll make it short. I saw you meet her last night. You're crazy. Okay, I'm crazy. But I saw you. You're so smart. Why don't you tell the cops? What do you want? Money. I don't know what you're talking about. Money to keep quiet. Five hundred dollars. You can't blackmail me. I never saw this Edna Hawley. All right. We'll leave it like that. You can't that. prove I met her. Because I didn't. I said we'd leave it like that. The cops will let you go before long. Yeah, they'll have to let me go. You know where I work, Charlie. See you soon? You won't see me. I'll wait a week. Wait a month. I don't care. A week. That's how long I'll wait. One week. Time's up, Charlie. So long, Charlie. Like I said, see you soon. Turn it off, man. Well, she did a good job. Yeah. I think he'll bite hard. Maybe. We'll let him think it over a while. When do we uh, release him? Tonight? First thing in the morning. Tonight we've got work to do. Work? Well, we have to rent a room for Nora near the Silver Swan. And you know how hard it is to rent rooms these days. <laughs> Good 
morning, Ben. Morning, Matt. Did you release Charlie? Yeah, just signed him out. Very unfriendly person, Charlie. Who's tailing him? Pearson and Doherty. Well, what about tonight? I called the manager of the Silver Swan. He's briefing Nora now. How many men did you get us? Nine, counting Pearson and Doherty. Tell me how you want them staked out. Well, six in the dance hall, one on the dictaphone in the room next to Nora's. Check. Now, what about us? We'll be outside the Silver Swan. What? Outside? Uh-huh. What about it? Well, it's freezing outside, Ben. Don't we ever get an inside job? What time has it been? Uh, uh, one... One fifty-five. Oh, I wish they'd closed these dance halls earlier. That wind's going right through me. Yeah, me too. Doesn't look like Charlie's going to show. Matt. Hmm? Crossing the street. Where? Where? End of the block. Yeah, I see him now. Keep back in the shadow. Oh, never mind. He's going the other way. I kind of look like him. Uh-huh. But I don't see Doherty. I guess we were wrong. I wonder when he'll show. He's got a week to make up his mind. Well, I hope the weather gets warmer. It feels like snow. Oh, snow. Yeah, what's wrong with snow? Pretty. <sighs> yeah, the music stopped. Nora should be out in a minute. I could use some coffee. Yeah, coffee sounds good. I haven't been this cold since I was pounding a beat. Get used to it. We'll be here tomorrow night, too. Uh, looks like you're right. <sighs> Uh-oh. There's Nora Ben coming out the side door. Well, we'll give her a few seconds start before we follow. That's not far to my place, Ben. We'll tail Nora home and then go have coffee, huh? Ben. Oh, Dreyer? Oh. Evening, Lieutenant. Boy, do you two look cold. Well, maybe it's <laughs> because we are. Anything to report? I hey, can hear Nora now. She just came in. Yeah, we followed her. Switch on the two-way, will you, Dreyer? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Everything all right, Nora? <laughs> yes, sir. But no Charlie Bond. Now, we'll try again tomorrow night. All right, Lieutenant. Stay in your room during the day. Be in the dance hall at the usual time. Gee, I hope he shows up soon. My feet are starting to hurt. Two o'clock, huh, Ben? Uh-huh. Well, looks like another dry run. I wonder why he doesn't show. Doherty says he sticks pretty close to his apartment. Uh, oh, it's not so cold tonight. I think it's going to snow. Uh, you said that the first night. Yeah, I still think so. Ben, maybe we ought to try something else. Yeah, like what? Pick Charlie up again. Keep him locked up until he cracks. You know that wouldn't work, man. Uh, yeah, I guess not. Give it time. We got four more nights. Yeah. Coming over for coffee afterwards? We well, ought to go to my place tonight. Well, mine's close. There. there there's Nora. Uh-huh. Oh, wait, man. Hmm? Not yet. What, what's, what's the matter? That alley there. Where the street lights burned out. I don't see anything. He ducked behind the building. Charlie? Well, I, I don't know. There. Yeah. It's Charlie. What do you know? He's letting Nora walk right by. I thought he would. In her room, huh? If we're lucky. 
We'll wait till he starts to fall. Ben? All right, man. Let's go. Charlie's not following her in, Ben. Just standing on the other side of the street, watching. Yeah, he's waiting. Waiting for what? To find out which room's Nora's. He should know now. She just turned on the light. We go up now, Ben? Yeah, the back way. Come on. We've been up here a long time, Ben. Maybe he won't come up. He'll come. Well, Nora must... Shh. Ben. Yeah. Turn it up, Dryer. Well, you took your time getting here. Yeah, I had to think about it. I thought maybe you wouldn't come. You said I had a week. I'm here now. Did you bring the money, Charlie? Money? For what? For me. So I'll keep quiet. I haven't got any money. Don't stall, Charlie. I want five hundred dollars. Suppose I don't pay. I'll go to the cops. Tell them I saw you with Edna Hawley. I've got a better idea. Better than money. Yeah, this. Charlie! Let's go. Well, I'll be... Lieutenant. What? <laughs> ben, look at Charlie. He sounds like a fish. He, he was going to... I, I threw him. The way they taught us. Nora, what's the matter? He was... He was going to kill me. Nora! Man. No. How about that? She slugs a killer, then passes out. What is it with women, Ben? Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Grebb, was written by Charles E. Israel with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Jay Novello, Junius Matthews, Sidney Miller, Pat McGeehan, John McIntyre, Mary Jane Croft, and Sammy Hill. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Beginning next Tuesday... The lineup will be heard at the same time on most of these stations on Tuesday evenings. The lineup joins Mystery Theater, Mr. and Mrs. North, Luigi and Ralph Edwards as a Tuesday feature on CBS. Be listening for the lineup at the same time on Tuesdays, beginning next Tuesday, February 27th. Now stay tuned for a special program in observance of Brotherhood Week, which follows on many of these same CBS stations. Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS, where Edward R. Murrow and Here It Now come to you Friday evenings. The Columbia Broadcasting System.